they actually looking at when they're looking right into the camera? And why was Jay Pritchett reading the same newspaper as Al Bundy after so many years? Who fell in love with his niece? And who's got a case of selective ornithophobia? Hi, I'm Peter, and you're watching OSA. Today, we'll be taking a look at all the mistakes you can find in ABC's Modern Family. And how about we start out with an existential head-scratcher? Who are they talking to? Yes, I know it's supposed to be a mockumentary. The characters on the show give interviews to a cameraman and reveal the details of their lives from the secret to the mundane. Sometimes, what they say just helps develop the plot. Sometimes, our family just make jokes. But who are they actually talking to, anyway? In early versions of the show, every character's glances at the camera could be justified by Modern Family's backstory, where a foreign film crew was making a documentary about the all-American Pritchett Dunphy family. But this storyline was eventually written out. And so, in their infinite wisdom, the scriptwriters replaced it with nothing. We see interviews with each character, but we don't know who they're talking to. Whenever someone glances at the camera or breaks the fourth wall, we never actually find out why they even have cameras in their houses in the first place. An eternal question without an answer. But in the end, isn't that what life is all about? See, I told you Modern Family was existential. A fresh newspaper. Before Ed O'Neill portrayed Jay Pritchett, he had another star role in the hit series Married with Children as Al Bundy. That's Jay, and that's Al Bundy and his family. Here he is reading a newspaper, and here's Jay reading a newspaper. Did you spot it? The years may have passed, the location may have changed, the names and the families may be different, and yet it's the same damn newspaper after so many years! Isn't there any fresh news? Okay, some of you may know this already, but here's why. The newspaper is a safe prop. It was created specifically for the purpose of filming shows and movies, as it doesn't have any unlicensed content in it. So everything's legal and above board. That's why you may have seen the same newspaper being read in so many TV shows and movies over the years. <laughs> You've probably memorized it by now, Ed, eh? Claire and Phil love stories? Claire seems like a very reliable and strong person, someone you can depend on. Unless the question's about how and where she met her husband, that is. It seems like she still can't make her mind up about that. The couple has so many stories, and none of them seem to match up. One of them is that Phil was a forestry major when they first met. Yet another one portrays him as a DJ. They also say that Claire was pregnant with Haley back when they were still in college. Then, the couple said that at the time of the pregnancy, Claire was already working at a hotel. Meanwhile, Phil once announced on a game show that he was working as an estate agent when he had his baby girl. According to yet more versions of this Rashomon-esque backstory, Phil worked at a construction site and helped build a movie theater. Fans should demand an episode that reveals the whole story because, well, I don't know about you, but I'm confused. Claire is doing everything she can, except for not everything. Do you remember that irritating stepping stone in the Dunphy house? Claire, as a very proactive and motivated person, asks Phil to fix it multiple times. Naturally, Phil, as her careless counterpart, doesn't do a thing about it. However, we've so often seen Claire take matters into her own hands thousands of times. Why couldn't she manage to do it then? The same goes for that obnoxious, irritating doorbell. Why doesn't Claire just fix everything? It's so her style. Perhaps it's an attempt to empower Phil and get him to make an effort. Or perhaps she just thought that delegating these problems to Phil would be funnier. And uh, she made no mistake. Little Fulgencio. What a great plot twist. Gloria's pregnant and Jay, who thought he was out of the limelight, now faces the difficult task of raising a brand new tiny human. The moment that Gloria announced the child's chosen name, well, do you remember the look on Jay's face? Jay and his wife are going at it back and forth for the whole episode, all over the name for the new family and cast member. Finally, Jay announces the kid's name at the end of the episode, and it's Fulgencio Joe Pritchett. He combined both options, but is smart enough to put Gloria's first, bringing her to tears of joy. Such a heartwarming moment for all of us viewers. Except, was the whole thing worth the trouble? No one actually uses his name. No one ever calls him Fulgencio. Even Gloria herself calls her son Joe later on in the show. So what was the point of all that fighting then? Cam's lessons. It's not really a mistake so much as an interesting trait that makes Cam more realistic and proves that the scriptwriters did a good job crafting a well-rounded character. Every time indecisive Mitch faces a problem, Cam is more than happy to help. And it's usually the same advice. Attack the problem and face your fear. Don't run, hit and smile. However, Cam never does any of that himself. 
It may be uncomfortable to see how he backs down from bullies like Andrew or Senior Kaplan, but is he really a hypocrite? Although Cam's ready to stand up for his principles, he barely follows them himself. But that's just how Cam is. You know the old saying, do as I say, not as I do. Difficulties with adoption Way back in 2009, at the beginning of the modern family saga, Cameron and Mitchell come back from Vietnam with a child that they adopted over there, a cute little girl named Lily. But there's one problem with this plot point. No same-sex couple would ever be able to adopt a child in Vietnam because gay marriages were banned there until 2015. I doubt Cam and Mitch would be able to adopt a child in a country that wasn't so LGBT friendly until very recently. It's a pretty significant mistake, but plenty of people were plenty glad that the show's creators either didn't know or simply didn't care, since Lily was such a beautiful addition to the show and added plenty of amazing tension to the plot. Manny's early crush is his niece? Now I'm going to remind you of something everybody's forgotten about, or tried hard to at the very least. In the first seasons of Modern Family, the young Manny was head over heels for Haley, going so far as to stalk her and causing her no shortage of uncomfortable situations. And even though Haley didn't like it, she never actually said to him, what the hell are you doing? You're my uncle now. Yeah, most of us probably forgot about that as the two of them are relatively close in age. If Gloria or Jay found out about Manny's crush, it's not hard to imagine what kind of trouble the romantic poet would have been in. As if things weren't embarrassing enough for him and Haley. Phil is a teacher, but there's some small problem. Having worked as a realtor all his life, Phil got the chance in season 10 to teach a real estate course at Luke's Community College. Thanks to his charm and charisma, Phil becomes a rather good teacher, despite the somewhat low level of academia going on in the college itself. Well, whatever the education level was, every teacher there was supposed to have a teaching degree. Teachers need accreditation to work at a college after all. However, despite his extensive practical experience, Phil Dunphy simply doesn't have that. That's why it's a bit weird that he's even allowed to teach in the first place. In real life, it doesn't matter how charismatic Phil is, it just wouldn't have worked out. But this is a show! Why spoil the fun with minor concerns like professional teaching and actual qualifications? Tightrope Walk In Season 3, Phil came up with another zany hobby, learning to walk a tightrope. Turns out that's one of the few things he actually manages to master. The whole family is delighted, and why wouldn't they be? Phil's made his old dreams come true. But two seasons before that, he says he spent time at a trapeze camp and tightrope walking was something that he could already do. Don't worry, Phil, we all get a bit forgetful sometimes. Or even make things up to look a little bit more talented. <laughs> Haley and alcohol. Claire definitely knows that her oldest daughter isn't perfect. She's dealt with Haley's problems and even cleared up her messes that she got herself into when she doesn't listen to Claire's advice. Like when Haley was dating Dylan, for example. In the sixth season, in an episode where Haley turns 21, Claire takes her out to get her first drink. However, in season four, Claire had already dealt with Haley's hangover. Did she simply forget? Actually, that's so Claire, simply editing out the memories she doesn't like. It's just that alcohol usually causes memory loss for the drinker, not the people around them. Despite Haley's reckless but charming nature, much like Claire, we like her no matter what. Ornithophobia. Everyone knows about Mitch and his ornithophobia. What's that? What's ornithophobia? <laughs> Fear of birds, of course. Remember when he ran all around his house just to get away from a bird? That's him running from a deadly, dangerous pigeon. Mitch is deathly afraid of birds, but isn't a chicken a bird too? In the episode, Did the Chicken Cross the Road, not only is Mitch not scared of a chicken, but he even feeds her and becomes her best friend. Do you know anyone with ornithophobia? Call them right now and ask if that's even possible. Let us know what they tell you. Just uh, don't reach out over Twitter. Too many tweets might set them off. Tonganoxie and other cities in Missouri. Thanks to Cameron, many think that Tonganoxie is in Missouri. But if you look the city up, you'll soon realize that it's in the neighboring state of Kansas. Well, there's a whole story behind this mistake, if it even is a mistake. The thing is that Eric Stone Street, who portrays Cameron Tucker, is from Kansas, and here's what he says about this whole confusion. When we started talking about where Cam was from, we wanted him to be from somewhere sort of rural, Stone Street said. And I knew enough about the business to know that we would start to then make fun of where Cam was from. So I said, well, I'd rather him be from Missouri. So we'd be making a fun of Missouri and not my home state of Kansas. 
a noble gesture to his native Kansans, but it does nothing to ease that notorious historical interstate rivalry. <laughs> Only kidding, of course, we can't be mad at Cameron. And plenty of Kansans and Missourians came together to laugh at his antics. Another one about Cam and Missouri. Cam is very proud of his origins, always trying to remind Mitchell and everyone else about this with his ability to get out of difficult, rural situations. We've heard a lot of stories about Cam's amazing motherland, and it seems like he's even got family over there. So uh, why hasn't he ever taken a single trip home? It seems like the thought never even crosses his mind. Especially odd if he's so in love with his home state. Don't get me wrong, but Cam isn't the busiest of people. He's had days, weeks, months free from work. Why not pop in and check in on the old family? FaceTime. And last but not least, do you remember the episode Connection Lost where all of the action is on Claire's computer? Let's see what she's got on there. Hmm, FaceTime, huh? Okay, so let's check her address book. Phil, Haley, Alex, Dad, everything seems in order. But wait, who's Krista Leverton? Well, that's the wife of Steve Leverton, one of the showrunners. Talk about a real life crossover for the modern family multiverse. Anyway, season 11 is soon to come, and that really will be the last season of our favorite saga about this crazy family from LA. Which episodes did you like the most? And uh, are there any other inconsistencies that we missed? Let us know in the comments. Let's all reminisce together. Thanks for watching. I was Peter, you were you, and I'll see you next time on OSA.